You know, I first met Harold in, I don't know if it was 1968 or 69. I mean, I don't know. I was in Buenos Aires a few months ago, and I was trying to decide whether it was September or October. I just don't remember. But um, probably 69. <coughs> and uh, as Todd was saying, he was living in Venice. And so he came over to Bukowski's, and uh, Bukowski was afraid to meet him. He stayed in his kitchen. And if you know Bukowski, he's supposed to be this big macho bravado guy, but he'd written, he was very excited about Harold. Uh, he read him in the Outsider magazine, published in a hand-printed hand, uh, magazine done in uh, New Orleans. And they published about three of Harold's poems, and uh, Hank was just completely taken by them, as was I as a 16-year-old kid. And uh, he was like a legend, and, and so Bukowski got this name Norse, you know, he was going to be this giant. And, uh, you know, I'm short and, and I tower over Harold, so. Uh, anyway, he opened the door and, and I, I made Bukowski come into the, his own living room, right? And the doorbell rang and he opened the door and he looked at Harold and he said, is this all there is? And Harold started fighting like this. <coughs> Bukowski said, oh, gee, I think there's a fly in the room. But then I noticed within about 20 minutes, Harold had redecorated the entire room with his mind and imagination. And Bukowski saw it and knew it. And, uh, and uh, uh, certainly his stature, is, it's always amazed me that, uh, that uh, Harold's work did have to go out of print before it came back into print because of what the work means to me, to Todd, to so many people. Because I talk to people all the time who read Harold Norris's work. Beyond that, I realize that almost every book I've published since Harold's death has a poem to uh, Harold in it. And uh, one is called Slicing Avocados, and it has to do a lot with his thing about health, which was amazing. You go into his kitchen, at least I would. I'm a carnivore, and I'd see this, these little packs of, of nuts and things. Aldous Huxley used to eat that way. You know, he'd dine on, a, on pine and nuts, you know. And, uh, but it reminded me, of we, we were out to dinner one night, Bukowski and I, and Harold, and Bukowski and I ordered T-bone steaks, and Harold had a little salad. And Bukowski said, eat like a man. And Harold looked up and said, let's see who's alive 25 years from now. <laughs> Needless to say. <laughs> it was my dear friend. And Harold was important for me in many ways, not just in, in the, helping to shape who I am in the process of becoming as a poet, um, but also in terms of just the gay life. When I came up here, frankly, he's the person who, who brought me out of the closet. There's nothing like Harold Norris <laughs> to do that for you, because he was jazzed up all the time. And we sort of had the same life, sort of Botticellian youths and, and uh, that kind of thing, uh, or guys that would like to come off of Michelangelo uh, fresco. Mm -hmm. So, and he took me out to bars, and one glorious day, we both met our lovers on the same day. That was wonderful. Mm -hmm. So I saw Harold, I watched my friend, who was lively and wonderfully ambitious, become a very <clears throat> old man. And I watched uh, Todd and his brother Tate and other wonderful people come and gather around him and take care of him, make sure he was provided for and he moved from his place in Albion. Right? It was a, it, it was a beautiful thing to see because he, he, um, he lived a great old age and as he surrendered what we think of as, as consciousness, as we know it, you know, um, in, into a kind, of, a kind of dementia, you know, it was, it was okay, he was wonderful. One day I came with a poet and we're in his room and he didn't know that the collected poems are in a drawer. I opened the drawer and there was the collected poems of Harold Norris and I took it out and I said, why don't you read us something? He turned to a page, had glasses on, but he was like this, I could never do that. And he read this poem he had written in 19, uh, sometime in the 60s in Barcelona so beautifully and he put it down and he said the crucial thing he said 
I really was a very good poet. And when he said was, that just, how could it not charm me? And it was not a sad thing. So that when he died, I wasn't even sad. I was, I was happy for the life, for the well-lived life. <clears throat> I wrote in the poem, actually about Idra, I said, I miss you more than I miss you. I'm not totally sure what that means, but I do. I miss him more than I miss him. He was playful in his mid-80s. He was like a kid. You know, he was somebody uh, you, could, you could play jumping jacks with when you're in your 50s and he's in his 80s, you know. And so I've, I've learned a lot about those things from Harold. And I, I, I hope you dig into the poems and, and love the poems. And I hope young people do. I really hope so.